talked about the other two cars, and let's talk about this 59 Impala. Um, Chevrolet came out with this big winged 59 Impala, uh, 1959. It was the year of the Finns. If everybody knows the Chryslers and the Chevys and the Fords, and it was the year of the Finns. And, and the 1959 Impala outdid them all with this fin arrangement and the cat eye uh, back tail lights, and it was quite a catcher. It was it was very unique for the even for Chevrolet. But this is a 1959 uh, Chevrolet Impala. They made an awful lot of them. Uh, this particular car is a Rochester fuel-injected car. They only made, the book says, they only made 26 sedan 1959 um, uh, sedan Chevys with the Rochester fuel injection. They actually had two models. They had a 250 horse. In the 250 horse, it's a 283 small block V8. And the 250 horse was uh, hydraulic lifters and pretty much of a stock cam. And then they jumped to the, the, um, the, the 290 horse. And then the 290 horse was solid lifters and, and, a, and a great cam. I think, I'd have to go back and check my, my books, but I think the cam was made for Chevy by Crowler. I think it was a Crowler cam. And when this fuel injection system was installed, it was, it was absolutely brand new, fast, and, and very unique. And for a two, you see in today's numbers, when you talk about a, a 290 horsepower factory car, back then, almost 300 horses coming off the factory was, was a very fast car. Today, you can get that almost in a Honda. <laughs> and, and so the numbers don't compute, but I go back to, to the 1950s and the 1960s. I grew up in my daddy's gas station and worked on these cars. So when this fuel-injected, Rochester fuel-injected 59 came out, this was the talk of the town. And I mean, it, it was fabulous. Let's take a look. It's all mechanical. And you just, you just, you won't see them like that anymore. The thing that you have to keep in mind with this fuel injection, it is all mechanical. You don't have any switches. You don't have any diodes. You don't have any sensors. You have no computer that's keeping everything in line. You get bad gas, you got a computer, it adjusts fuel injection levels and, and injection pressures and everything else in, in the modern day cars. Didn't happen here. This is all mechanical, period. The only electric on here is, is the electric choke. And when it decides to work, it works beautifully, but when it decides not to work, it's, it's, it's a struggle. Um, I've owned this car now probably about 15 years. It's all been restored from, from ground frame up, frame up, everything's done. Um, it has, we have stayed almost completely stock. And they called this the 283 Ramjet when it came out. It was called a Ramjet 283. Um, on the valve covers, and it was a 290 horse on the valve covers, very difficult to see. It has 290 horse uh, decals that are on the side. I put those on, um, and it says 290, but it's a 283 Ramjet. And this thing is a thing of beauty when it's working. I mean, it. this is a big car, and like I say, to a lot of the young fellows today, 290 horse, ah, that's nothing. In the day, this is pre-Hemi. This is pre uh, wedges and 426s and 413s and this is pre-Hemi stuff, pre-409. Um, the, actually the 409 started with a, with a 348 and then they punched it out and went to the 409 and the 62, 63 409s were racing against these big Hemi stuff and then the Hemi took over. I used to race them years ago at Ramona track when I came home from the army and had a had a had a, a Plymouth that was 63 Plymouth and and it, but I was just a, a common street racer and you get up against these factory guys it was fun but you always got beat <laughs> they they had tons of money but it it wasn't the winning that was important you, you were you were doing what you enjoyed to do 
and I go back a long time, a long way. But these these are very rare. They, you you seldom see them, and I'm 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 out of room. I've got three cars, and this car will probably go to the desert in Scottsdale uh, the first part of uh, 2022. Um, I've I've had it 15 years. It'll be 16 years then. I want to build a I want to go old school again like an idiot. I want to build a 28 Roadster, flathead Roadster. I want to go back full flathead and and all of that stuff. And, and I may have my head examined before I get done, but I'm anxious to do another car and I need room. And, and this needs to, this will go to, a, this will go to the, you fuely guys out there, you, you know, this is a labor of love. If you own one of these 1957, 58, 59 fuel injection units in 1957, they changed that fuel injection, trying to improve it four times in one year. And then they continued to tinker, continued to change it, continued to do it. In 1959, this was the last year that Chevy uh, put these from the factory, put a, a Rochester fuel-injected V8 uh, in a sedan. They kept them in the vets, and God bless them, they continued to improve them and improve them and, and keep them better and better. And then you, and then you get... You get what you have today. Uh, that's where it's, this is where, where this is where your fuel injection. This was the birthplace of the fuel injection of today, and, and museum stuff. And uh, if you're an old guy like me, you can look back on these with fond memories. And, and if you've ever owned one, you know it's a love hate relationship because when they're good, boy, it's it's a pleasure to drive, and they're quick and and sound beautiful. Let me kick it over real quick. I have one of the best fuel injection fellows in the country, and uh, he lives uh, right near me in Chuck Smith in Valley Center. And uh, when I have problems, I go see him, and I've taken it off. This car we've had probably about 12 years. The car was originally a frame off, body off restoration was done in around 1997. Um, I know the car all the way back to about 1972. Um, but it's, it's, it, they're, they're big. Uh, my wife hates it. <laughs> it's too big. And and it's but it's uh, it's it's just a rare car. Well, this is the Fuelies. This is Fuel and Touch Roger Jeanette's book, and it is a fabulous publication. If you want to know, if you want to know um, information, here's a '58 right here. I know this car. Uh, this was owned by a fella in in Valley Center. Uh, I th I think it was a made car. I'm not sure if this was an original. But this book is Fuelies, Fuel Injected Corvettes 57 to 65, and it gives all kinds of technical data in all of the different years. Here's a, the split windows, 63 vet. Here it is right here. He did three or four pages. Uh, a, he put a lot of information in here on the car. Um, a lot of it that I supplied him, he, he, he got into the record books and he started pulling numbers and, and how many was made. Um, and, but I'm pretty sure this book's probably about 10 years old because it was done shortly after I got the car. Muscle Car did an article on it and this was when the car was in New Jersey. I didn't own this car. But a fella had bought it. This was shortly after uh, the restoration was done. I think this was probably around uh, 2000, yeah, around year 2000, 2001. Um, but uh, they did a nice article on the car. Here we go. And they did a love lost and love found. And there's a story behind that. This is one of 19 fuel ejected 59 Impalas. Um, in the love lost, love found, um, <laughs> I, uh, I grew up in Ramona, California, like I say, and my dad owned a gas station there. And I was 20 years old, and there was a young lady in Ramona that had a Fuley, and it was a black, it was a black with blue interior, 
and I had a, a, um, a 62 Plymouth and I wanted to, I wanted to swap cars with her and she wanted mine and I wanted that fuel injection. She couldn't get it to run and I was determined to get it to run. And so we were going to do the transfer. We were going to do the transfer on a Saturday. Well, that Friday evening, I got my draft notice. So, so my draft notice, uh, the, the, that obviously that I was leaving the military. We were going to go play for a couple of years. And, and so the, the love lost and love found. And, and I was on the hunt probably for the last, oh, I don't know, 25 years looking for a black fuelie and I found this car in South uh, South Carolina and uh, I couldn't get there quick enough and and it was absolutely the car I wanted and it was a twin I have an old photograph somewhere of the original the original here it is there's the one that I was swapping my Plymouth for, and that would have been... How'd you find that photo? 1964. I took that picture in 1964. That was, that was before the... Before you went to the draft. Before I... Yeah, yeah before well, you went to war. That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. Yeah. What happened to that one, do you think? You know, I don't know, because when I came home, she was gone, the car was gone, everything was gone. <laughs> you see what I mean? So... But this is this is an old picture of it, and I dug it out of my archives, and it had blue interior, and it has basically the same setup. It's got the dog dish caps, and I I, I remember the dog dish caps, and the, and this was this was kind of '60s stuff, uh, thin white walls, and so when I when I got the car, it had the big wide whites on it, but they were old. Oh, they're, they're, they, they weren't radios, and they rode like a truck. And if anybody that's been around old cars that does old cars, you're going down the road. If you got those old poly-ply narrow tires, you take a rut in the road, and you're going to go where the rut goes. You don't go where you're going. And radios, radios take care of that. Radios give you a much better driving, a much better ride. But like I say, this, 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 this love found or love lost and love found, when I when I was talking to the guy that did the article on this car, uh, he thought that was a great story.